everyone, and as Karine had said, we are going to be talking a bit about designing roads in Infrastructure Design Suite. Just to let you know, you only have this capability when you have Autodesk Infrastructure Design Suite Ultimate 2014. Uh, that's PEZ Designing Roads does need the Roads and Highways module that comes in the Ultimate Suite. So if you don't have that suite, um, definitely stay on the line. It will at least give you an introduction to what designing roads, how designing roads is a little bit different in this suite uh, than in the premium suite. Okay. All right. So just to give you a quick introduction to Ascent, Ascent is the sole provider of AOTG 2014 curriculum, and so that means that we can provide you with the software um, course manuals or student guides. Very quickly, we able to uh, actually get uh, early pieces of the software to be able to provide those manuals uh, at the time, the same time the software releases. And so we have a great relationship with Autodesk that allows us to do that. Uh, just a little bit about some of the uh, product line that we have for the infrastructure design suite. We do have Civil 3D Fundamentals, Civil 3D for Surveyors, Civil 3D for Grading, of course, the course that we're going to be talking about today, the Autodesk Infrastructure Design Suite 2014 BIM Workflow for Roads and Highways. We also have the MAP 3D Essentials and Introduction to Plant Design. So let's go and jump right over into Chapter 4 of that Infrastructure Design Suite course book. What I'm going to be using today is instructor slides that come with the instructor tools if you do um, if you do teach this class as well. And so these are available for purchase. Okay. Uh, what we're going to be going over, we'll be talking about roads that are constrained by design criteria, modify the horizontal and vertical layouts, and then take a quick look at vertical optimization. So we won't have the time to go through the higher chapter, but you'll at least get a, a good idea of some of the items that are in that chapter to um, to how to design the roads in InfraWorks. So one thing that I will say about this as well, um, you'll notice down in the left-hand corner of my slide, it shows a certification topic. One thing that we like to do is anytime Autodesk has a certification exam that is covered by the student guides, we do note that that is a certification um, like an objective when it, that information comes up in the manual or in the in the slides. And so I uh, just want to point that out. There is a certification for the BIM workflow for roads and highways, and this to cover one of the objectives, which is draw a new version of the layout using layout tools. So the difference here, for those of you that have the premium suite or have are, are new to uh, the Autodesk InfraWorks software, you'll notice that you have the option to create roads, which are sketched roads, or you have the option to design roads, which are constrained roads. And so the difference is sketched roads are great for viewing things in a 2D environment or a 3D environment. You can also break those roads up and show different segments of the road in different ways. So you could have a bridge section in one area and a road with sidewalk, curb and gutter, and all of that in another area. Design roads are a little bit different because design roads can actually go right into Autodesk Civil 3D software, and they become alignments and profiles, regular alignments and profiles in the Civil 3D software. So it's a great workflow going from InfraWorks that gives you a really high resolution uh, design and uh, visuals to help sell both clients and stakeholders like the community on the projects that you're designing. And so um, when you're designing roads in InfraWorks, you can actually set tangent lengths, you can set the design speeds, and then those design speeds help set the curve and spiral radius. And of course, once you have a design created, then you can do some vertical optimization to help you balance the cut and fill along the entire corridor. So that's why you're not able to break up the design road into multiple segments, because you do want it one seamless alignment throughout so that when you ver um, optimize the vertical, it is one seamless alignment that, that acts um, in connection with each 
other. So when you start designing um, or dry engineered roads, you have to know a little bit about the design speed because the, the required design speed is determined by the type of uh, road being designed and where it will be located. So you've got the option to do freeways, arterials, collectors, and local roads. And then on the right side of, of our um, list there, you'll see that a freeway can have a maximum design speed of 100 miles per hour or 110 kilometers per hour. And then the arterials was at 50 or 80 collectors 40 and 60, and local roads at 30 miles per hour or 45 kilometers per hour maximum. Now, when you select that design speed, um, you're going to, it's going to set the curve radius or the spiral radius. And so if you need a tighter radius, you may have to reduce the design speed of that road to be able to fit a tighter radius curve in there. That's all according to uh, nano standards. Now, um, depending on where you're designing the road, design standards for a project often depend on the nature of the project, the type of transportation corridor, and the funding agency or location. So, for instance, in the United States, the American Association of State Highway Transportation Officials, or AASHTO, uh, set the design criteria that is most commonly used. And so that's basically what uh, you know, some of this is, is, is off of. So um, once you set that design speed or, or select the type of design road that you're going to be using, then you go in and you can actually set your tangent lengths. Uh, you can type in the length of the, the straight piece of the, the road from point of intersection to point of intersection. And you can change the curve options. You can have curve and spirals, or you can have just a straight curve. And then um, you can decide how, how big a radius. And that radius is only within a certain parameter because of the design speed. Um, once you have your roads actually put in, you can modify those roads both horizontally and vertically. And you'll receive different gizmos. These are kind of like grips in Civil 3D. Uh, you'll, you'll see different gizmos according to where that um, gizmo falls on the alignment or on, along the corridor. And if you're in a, a vertical view, anything more than a 45 degree angle, you'll see different grip, gizmos for vertical grips as well. So you'll see, um, you know, you'll see point of intersections, midpoints, curve radius, uh, and all, all of those on the, the hand side for your horizontal gizmos. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see profile gizmos uh, where you can change the point of intersection vertically or horizontally in that profile view, or you can um, set up the curvature with a circle. Okay? But let's take a look at that in the software. So let me just switch over to InfraWorks so that you can see what, I'm, what I mean by this. Now, when I go to the Home tab, what you um, before I even start, I always like to start with a proposal. And so, on the Home tab, the Design Panel, I'll click on Proposals, and that's bringing up my Proposals uh, dialog over on the left-hand side. In this dialog, right now, I'm looking at the East Access Proposal. And Cleve, this gives you the option to, to design multiple options within the same file and be able to turn one design option on or off. And so you'll see this is my east access right here, this road. And if I change this over to my master view, which is a base model, every for works file will have at least a master proposal because that's all your existing conditions information, your roads. Your, your surfaces, everything that came in um, as a base condition. Now I'll click on the plus symbol, add a new proposal, and you'll see since changed over to the master, that east access route has disappeared, by the way. So I'm going to click the plus symbol in the proposals to add a new proposal, and I will call this my design. And it does give you some statistics about everything that's 
in here so far. So if I wanted to see statistics about the roads, I just expand it. And you can see I haven't added any roads to this proposal yet. So as I add roads, the proposal um, will start adding up the lengths uh, as I go through and add them. But I'm going to close my cl proposals panel because now I'm ready to start designing my road. I always start with a fresh new proposal so that I have interference in things. Okay. To be able to access our design roads, of course, I do need to have on the tool strip, I need to have the Create and Edit features turned on so that I see my draw strip at the top of the screen. This is our top draw strip. And when I get to the Roads tool, you'll notice that it's set on Create Roads right now. Using Create Roads is going to do Sketch Roads. That's what's available in the Premium Suite. In the Ultimate Suite, you have the addition of having the design roads for freeways, arterials, and local, like we were seeing in the slides. And so if I want to design a road that um, basically is about 40 miles per hour maximum, I can go ahead and do a collector road. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to select that. Now, just like with Civil 3D, everything is about style inside of InfraWorks. And so I do want to make sure I have the right style selected for the road that I'm going to be designing. To do that, I want to go back to the same tool that I selected, and I'm going to left-click on it, and it comes up and it shows me the styles that are available. Now, the styles that you see here, these are styles that I have used previously. But when I click on the folder option, I can see all of the styles that are available for this type of road. So I can choose any of the roads that are listed, or I can go up to the top and choose one that's from the street and interstate listing. Okay, of those style options. I'm going to do a boulevard with um, summer trees on the park strip. Select it. I click OK. Now I'm ready to start drawing out that road. I'm just zoom in a little bit so that you can see the road I'm going to connect to. What you'll notice is it does have um, light poles on the sides uh, with a sidewalk. And I'm going to start my road just a little bit past my center line. The reason I like to do that, and this is just a personal preference, but once I start it there, um, when it's done, it's going to clean up the intersection automatically for me. Okay. And so the nice thing is here, this is going to show me the length of my tangent. You'll see as I move my cursor, it does give me the length that's there. And I can go ahead and type in any length that I want. So if I need it to be, let's say it to be 345 feet from one point of intersection to the other. I then 345 and left click to set. And you'll notice it stopped at a little bit before where my cursor was because my cursor was actually at 355 feet. Now, the next thing I want to do is actually start setting a curve in here. The curve will only set if there is enough length. So you see, as I move further away from that point of intersection, I see that I have a curve and spiral option set. Okay. If I would like to change that, I'll simply right-click and choose the curve option instead of the curve spiral curve, or spi spiral, sorry. So I choose the curve option. Now I have just a regular curve in there, and I can set the radius. So if I need to change the radius that I'm seeing according to the design speed, I can right-click, go into the curve options, and I can use the slider to set that curve radius, or I can type the radius right in the box. So I can set in 250 and hit enter, and you'll see that my curve, when it turned into a 250-foot curve radius, and I can go ahead and set where I want that tangent length to end at this point. That curve will be the exact radius that I need. Okay. I'm just going to zoom out sure I go far enough over. All right, so I'm going to pick up here. And I'm going to let it default the, the next curve radius. And point, ooh, we'll go about right there. At this point, I'm going to be going over a bridge, so I may want to go ahead and put a spiral in. So I'm going to right-click, set it back to a spiral curve spiral. 
And if there's enough room, obviously I'll, I'll get that curved spiral. So I'll put here, I right click again, go back to curve, maybe my curve radius one more time. 250, great. And see if it has enough room there. Now, you can see that I made a slight mistake. I left clicked where I shouldn't have. And that's okay because I can always right click and do an undo. This is back to the previous point of intersection. Now, when I'm ready to end my, my alignment or my corridor, I'll just zoom to the area that where I want it to end, and I can double click, or I can left click one time and right click, and I can tell it to end the drawing because I'm done sketching that out. It's going to think for just a minute, and then as you'll see, because I went a little bit past the center line of my road, it went ahead and cleaned up that intersection for me automatically. So now I have a nice four-lane um, collector road. And let me draw, just scoot back over to the beginning here. Again, because I started that uh, point of my alignment there, a little bit past the center line, it cleaned up that intersection as well. Now, you'll see that I do have my uh, grips, or my gizmos, I should say. And so if I need to change this, maybe uh, you know we've got this little road here. Maybe we need to stay within the right of way of that road. Well, I can use the, the midpoint grip to change where that cord falls. Just by clicking, I'm holding my left mouse button down as I drag it and I let go, it will release it there, and the road will clean up around it. Okay. Thing happens when I do my curves. If I and if I um, right click on one of the gizmos, I can go in to edit curve and edit it with exact measurements. So I can actually put in a curve of 200 instead of 250. And once I left click out of that um, flout menu, then it will go ahead and clean up my drawing for me. It's very easy to work with. Um, one thing to notice, let me over here. I'm just going to change my view. I'm holding my left mouse button down to change my view to a vertical view. And so one to see is it doesn't perfect you cut and fill right now. Um, it just kind of sucks the the um, surface up to the road vertically. Okay, so that's that's something you know. Hopefully, we'll see in the future. But when I select that road, you I have gizmos that will allow me to, to adjust the vertical. Now, I would really like the vertical option, a uh, vertical curve option to be along this um, side. What I can do is I can right click where at that point of intersection to go and click on add PVI for an add um, profile vertical curve. And so I did that. You'll see now I have a control point and curve point. So if I pick this point, it's going to allow me to change the length of that curve. And when I choose the uh, box that is a point of intersection, see that I have a kind of a plus symbol around my vertical curve, my vertical intersection. And basically, this is going to allow me to adjust it vertically only or horizontally only. So you can see it's not going to allow me to do both at the same time. So if I was going to change the vertical of it, I just move it straight up and then go. Then if I would also like to change where it falls horizontally, that point of vertical intersection, I can just go ahead and left click again and move it where I want it. Okay. So um, be nice, but many of us are probably used to actually working in a pro view because many of us come from Civil 3 We have the option to first draw it horizontally, or horizontally, and then we create a profile view to be able to adjust the vertical. Well, if you are used to that, you can get into the. Um, you do need to be in a vertical view, so I'm a little bit past five degrees. 
degrees to be able to see the vertical. Then when I right click, um, you'll notice I have the option to show in profile. Okay. So that's going to actually open up a profile view that allows me to then make adjustments as well. So if I want to change where my points of vertical intersection fall, I can just adjust it in either view, either in the, the model view itself or in the profile view. And so here, if I zoom on this, um, You'll notice that I do have my slope that is showing it's at 10.9%. Um, wait, that's right. No, that is that is 10.9%. And over here on this side we have 2.85%. So I want to make sure that's less than 10%. I can go ahead and grab that point of intersection, and as I adjust it, it shows me what the new percent is. So I can go ahead and, and keep moving that around until I find a suitable uh, percentage. Okay. All right. Um, so we've taken a look at drawing this horizontally. We've taken a look at adjusting it vertically and adding additional points of intersection. Now, in the profile view, I can add additional points of intersection by right-clicking wherever I want to add that PVI. Okay, So you do have the options to um, add them both in the model view and in the profile view. And of course, we can make those adjustments. Now, another thing that you have available to you is you can adjust your curves um, in the profile view just looking at the modes that you have here. Um, let's see if I can grab it properly. No, it's not going to let me grab that one. So um, that is the case. You can always come back over into the model view, grab the gizmos, and adjust the, the length of that, that curve uh, manually. Okay. Um, one thing that you can do if you want to check the parameters of that curve, I can right-click on it and click on Curve Properties. This is going to show me the parameters, but it's not going to allow me to change the parameters from the uh, the list here. Okay, so just just know that you can make that change. Now, the other thing that you might need to do is maybe you need to tighten up a curve. Um, let me go ahead and go back to a plan view up here. There we go. And let's say I need to change the length of this spiral curve. Do um, see, not be in a perfect plan view here. Let me set it back this way. If I click on that curve, I have the option to set the curve radius and the spiral length, right? But you'll notice that it'll only go so small. Um, if I change that, I can do that by changing the design speed and then go smaller with the design speed. So if I do need to change the design speed to make my curves um, a, a radius, I would have to select the design road and then right-click and choose Road Properties. In the Properties uh, box, we have the option to change the name of it, which highly, highly recommend because once you get into vertical optimization or when you take that road over into Civil ID, then you want to have that the name of the road in Civil 3D so it's easy to find it. Otherwise, it comes across with just the ID, which is the 4453 that you see at the top, and it might not be so easy to figure out which road is the design road. Okay, so I might come in and call this my um, future road. And if I scroll down, I'll see the option to change the design speed or maximum speed. You'll notice that because I used a collector road, it's set at 39.999, which is, of course, the maximum of 40. If I wanted to change it, I go ahead and bump that down to, um, let's say, 25 for a residential area. And it does not take effect until I actually click 
the update option at the top. So anything that you do in here, if you want it to be set at those values, you do have to choose update. The other option that you could do is actually click on the auto update, and then anytime you make changes, it will automatically update. Okay? All right, so let's um, go back over to our slides briefly and talk a little bit more about some of your options here. Here I've talked a little bit about the road properties. We can change the name, the description. We can set a different style as well. Uh, set the design speed and, oh, I forgot about this one. You can change the number of lanes. So if I go back over to my uh, software, if meant for it to have a median down the middle but just one lane on each side of the road, I can right-click on it, go back into the properties, and then when I scroll down, Where'd it go? <laughs> I am sure I am overlooking it. Okay, there. So my road, I have lanes forward. If I don't put anything in there, it's going to be default to whatever the style suggests. So you have lanes forward and lanes backward. If I just type a one in each of those, it will put one lane on each side of middle median, which makes it a highway um, with just one lane, okay, on each side. So some of the things that you can do to adjust the roads that you're designing, and the, I, I love the fact that we have the option to actually see everything that's going on, and I didn't have to create this template, it just comes with the software where I have the center median with trees down the center of the road separating those two lanes and my curb and gutter, sidewalk, and uh, a little bit of park strip as well as my um, light post. So, all right, so everything, it's looking really, really good. Um, the next thing we would want to do is actually go in and start doing some of our vertical optimization. Now, the thing that is only available, like I said, with the Roads and Highways module of the Ultimate Suite. So it's very important for you to understand that because you wouldn't be able to do this with the Premium Suite. But the idea behind the vertical optimization is it gives you the option to compare costs of different design alternatives and, and um, consider the environmental impact of it. And after optimizing that vertical, you can actually set the maximum grade that you want for the road, uh, minimum tangent lengths, you set drainage grades, uh, you can anchor certain points of vertical intersection. So let's say at the beginning of the alignment where we were meeting up with an existing road, we can tell it we want to lock that intersection to the, grade, the, the elevation that we have so that we make sure we meet up with that. And then maybe at the middle, we can lock that to make sure where we're going over the bridge or over the water, we can lock that point at a, a certain elevation so that we make sure that we, the traffic along the river, the, the boats and, and whatnot, can get under the bridge as you're going through. And by locking those points, then when you go do a vertical optimization, and to automatically adjust all the other points of vertical intersection so that it keeps the maximum grade it does the proper drainage and, um, or the proper drainage grade, and will minimize the cut and fill according to the parameters that you've set. One of the things that you can also do is you can locate borrow and waste pits. So if you've ever had to create a mass haul diagram to reduce construction costs, um, you know, basically reducing the amount of costs that you'll have bringing dirt into the site or taking dirt out of the site, you know, taking any cut, um, cut material off-site or bringing any fill material in. You can have those um, waste and borrow pits available to help reduce that and keep those within the free haul distance, okay? Unfortunately, today, one thing uh, you have to do to be able to optimize that. When I go to the Optimize tab, you have to make sure that your Autodesk 360 is signed in. So if I were not signed in, this is what it would look like. Um, 
you have to sign in right here. And when I click on one of the tools, it's going to pop up that Autodesk button to make sure that you are signed in to the Autodesk Inf 360 account. The reason you have to do this is it's going to cost you so many credits to be able to, uh, so many cloud credits to be able to optimize this, okay? Because this is going to do a lot of thinking. You would not want to use your own personal computing power to optimize it because it's going to use a lot of brain power of that computer. And so it's going to actually go out and optimize it out in the cloud. And when it's done optimizing, um, you'll be able to bring that information back in. You'll be able to look at graphs of the optimization. Uh, you'll know how much the project costs. Uh, let me, let me it, go ahead and sign back in here. I'm out of cloud credits on my account, and so I'm not going to be able to show you the actual optimization. But I want you to see what you can set up here. Um, because I signed in, I can now go and set my construction and earthworks costs. This is going to bring up a file, and this file is coming from the cloud. This is where I can go in and set my excavation costs according to cubic yards, my loads, my haul, uh, my waste. Um, I can set utility information. So I can set all of these things up according to the costs in my local area, and it going to set it out to the cloud this information. All right. So that way if I'm working on it at home and then go into the office the next morning, all of these costs are saved for me. Okay. I can actually set the free haul distance here as well. All right. So set all of these costs and parameters up and then when I click OK, it's available for me to then go in and do my vertical optimization. Now again my optimization is not going to work today just because I don't have any cloud credits, but I'll show you what would actually come up if you were to do that vertical optimization. It's going to come up. There we go. All right, so what it is, it's going to come up with some advanced, an advanced settings dialog box. And this is where uh, you would actually go in and set your profile constraints, set your maximum grade, your tangent length, um, the PVI frequency, so I can set how often I want PVIs, so it will actually add additional PVIs for me automatically. And then I can anchor those PVIs that I need to. So, you know, here I was going to actually anchor my bridge pointer section and both my beginning and my end point vertical intersections um, so that. I was matching the grade or matching the elevations of those those roads. And I would just click on the optimize option. It would go out to the cloud, run a report, and then the report would come back and it would show me where I would need to have cut and fill and and the elevations and everything. Not let show you where what your profile needs to look like to optimize that profile. It would also give you the option to bring in a proposal that automatically draw that road at the correct elevations for you. Okay. So this looks really great. Um, I, I say, you know, once I've I've done everything, um, I I could. Yep, I'm ready to move this into a detailed design phase. You know, we've done as much of the design as we can within InfraWorks, and we're ready to take that information out into Civil 3D to do the detailed design. In order to do that, we um, would need to do export of information. And so, um, um, I would go up into the application browser and go down to export and take it over into Civil 3D, I would want to export an IMX file. Now if I do that, let me let me just make sure I'm in a plan view. I like I'm I'm funny about this. Um, I think it works better if you are in a plan view before you start exporting. Okay. I found a, a few little bugs in it when you when you don't export from the plan view. So I just make sure that I click on my view cube on the top, puts me back to a plan view. Now I can go up into the um, Application menu, go to export, and choose the IMX 
option. I'm going to ask you how you want to export this. Now, I can start with um, a recent export, or I can go ahead and take my entire model, which would take all of my roads and buildings and all of the GIS information that started as my base and it will take all of that over into Civil 3D. Now, I will warn you about this. I do not suggest that you do that because all these roads that came in as GIS data, they are sketched roads, okay? So it, any of the roads that you use with the Create Roads command, they are sketch roads. And what's going to happen when you go into Civil 3D, those sketch roads or the Create Roads or those roads that you have in the Premium Suite, they do not go over as alignments and profiles. They actually go over as um, splines. Okay, so it show up as alignments in the list, but all of the curves and everything in there, they would be these little tiny segments, and so it's not quite the kind of information you'd want to work with. But you can make do with it, right? So I'm going to actually define my extents and define a polygon around the area that I want. It's going to come back out to my model and allow me to start picking points. And I'm just going to go through and pick some points here. Just a moment. When I'm done with the polygon, when I'm ready to place the last corner of that polygon, I will double click and it will accept that polygon for me. Okay. So I'm going to give it just a minute to think of this, catch up with me. There we go. And so now you can see I can set the target coordinate system. Uh, I have the option to choose any of the coordinate systems in my files and the target file. So this is actually going to allow me to tell it we want that to go. If I click on the folder option, I can go out and tell it exactly where I want it to go. So I'm going to tell it to go to my C drive, and I'll just go to this Z roads and highways, and we'll call this my design. Okay. This is going to be an IMX file. I just simply click Save, and now I'm ready to tell it to export. All right. Now, if you have one seat of the ultimate suite and you have just one person worrying about the design, then it doesn't matter if um, if you have regular premium suite to take this over into Civil 3, you can start with uh, with premium or ultimate um, or the Civil 3D part because you get all of the functionality in Civil 3D no matter which suite you have. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up Civil 3D. And I'm going to show you how to bring that designed road over into Civil 3D, and then um, what it looks like when you when you bring it across. Okay. And I I would have had Civil 3D running, but I was worried about my system not running quickly with WebEx going and InfraWorks and Civil 3D, so I didn't want to chance it and have any crashes happen. We're almost there. Okay. So the nice thing about the design roads again, um, you can take straight into a detailed design and start including, uh, you know, starting your assist and everything to it. I'll get my cursor back. All right. <laughs> okay. So definitely you need a lot of patience waiting for it to, you know, refresh and everything. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and bring it in to the blank drawing that I have. It's just drawing one. I'm just going to bring it straight across. So when I'm in Civil 3D, I can go to the Insert tab, and on the Import panel, 
I'll choose to import an MX. I'm going to ask me the file that I want to import, so I'm going to go back out to my C drive and choose the correct directory here. I design IMX, I click open, and do a quick zoom to extent so that you can see everything that it brought in. There we go. What you'll see here, um, you'll see the river coming through because that was a feature that it brought across. It brought across this alignment, which was my existing code uh, that came in from GIS data, but when I select it, what you'll notice is, even though it is an alignment, look at the spline. It's it's crazy how many points of intersection you see there. And so we want to use those uh, create or sketch roads, but design road, when I hit escape, the design came across, and you can see that it is a regular alignment. The curve data all stayed, and it brought in the surface information behind it as well. And so um, the, the, the tin file behind my surface, and if I go into the Prospector tab and expand my sites, oops, go slower there, there we go, expand one, expand alignments, expand my center line. And you see that the reason I went ahead and named it Future Road in the properties, it's because I didn't want it to come in as a number. Now it came in with the name of the alignment. And when I expand it, you'll see that I do have a profile that's just to that alignment as well. So it kept the align information as well as the profile information. And now I'm ready to keep moving it forward to create the assemblies and build the corridor and take it into that detailed design phase. Okay. So that way, uh, the Ultimate Suite has that capability. And so that is everything I wanted to show you today. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back over to our original slides and talk a bit about the options that you have. Now, everything that I did today, um, as I said, it, this is out of Chapter 4 of the Autodesk Infrastructure Design Suite 2014 BIM Workflow for Roads and Highways. That student manual comes in um, multiple options. Um, one thing that I did mention, it does have certification in it because this does go against a certification exam. It has review questions in that guide and in has instructor tools. The slides that I was using today, uh, you can actually purchase separately so that you can uh, teach this to people in your organization or to clients of your own. The that's that the student guides come in, they do come in a printed spiral bound, um, eight and a half by eleven book, or they come in ebooks. I personally love the ebooks. You have all the same capabilities with the ebooks um, that you have with the student guides that come printed, but it's even better because you can have all of your books in your iPad, on PC, or on your phone, and you don't have this great big weight, right? Um, you can take notes in those ebooks. They're really great. Um, I, I'm in the student or the instructor tools. Another thing that comes with the instructor tools is it actually comes with a course syllabus. Now we have two course syllabuses in there, or syllabi. That one is for an ATC instructor, which is a day course. Um, no, I'm sorry, it's a two course. So it, it goes through and it shows you how long you should spend in each chapter for a two day course, and it has a syllabus for um, vacation for an 18 week course if you are using that, okay? You can also purchase digital site licenses, which is a great way to um, be able to print your own manuals. Um, other offerings that Ascent provides, uh, we do technical writing services for your presentation needs. We do editing, proofreading, best practice methodologies. Um, you know, help you with static specification manuals. Uh, we'll help you with your custom curriculum if you need to you know, add additional information to the roads and highways. Maybe maybe you're working with surveyors or something and, and you want to you know, train surveyors and train your designers and all in one class. We can actually combine a survey course with the um, roads and highways course as well. All right. Uh, we've talked about that. And talked a bit about your 
our points. So what to do now, since we're getting low on time, is I'd love to open it up to questions and answers. And while thinking about those questions and answers, um, of course, if you're going to purchase the course or the guide or the instructor tools, you can do that from the Ascent eStore. You can get a hold of us. Um, our toll-free number is there. You can also send us an email for any feedback. It's one thing that I always love to get is feedback on the, the manuals that I create. Um, you want to know how it's working for you. If there's additional information that you need, definitely let me know that um, by sending us an email at the feedback at ascentedge.com.